Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment of Health Professional Radio. Speaking of returning, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Burl Dropulich, this morning. He's joining us here as co-founder and executive director of Caring Cross to talk about uh, the dosing of the first patient in the first human clinical trial of CAR-T, its potential cure for HIV. Welcome back, Burrow. How have you been? Thanks, Neil. I really appreciate you having me back. For our listeners who may not be familiar with you as a contributor, give us a little bit of a reminder as to your background and uh, what led you briefly to Caring Cross. Yeah, I've been in the uh, gene therapy space for over 30 years um, and um, working on specifically on um, uh, delivery systems um, to genetically modify cells. And um, we have worked on a number of different um, clinical programs in the past for HIV, for um, cancers, um, and for sickle cell um, disease as well. Um, and um, I was uh, previously in uh, various uh, companies, and um, and we see that the the gene therapy field, um, particularly like CAR T cells, have shown a lot of promise. Um, but we've also seen the issue of affordability and access with these products costing um, a very um, high um, price that we don't believe is affordable and sustainable over the long term. Mm -hmm. So my co-founder and I, uh, Dr. Rem Sorrentis, um, we founded uh, Caring Cross in order to tackle some of these issues, to sort of think about them differently so that we can make these uh, transformative therapies affordable and accessible for everyone. So what have you been up to since we last spoke? Uh, it's been about a year we were talking talking about CAR T cells. What's going on? What's the latest advancements and um, what can we expect? Yeah, thanks for asking that question, Neil. So um, we've been very busy over the past year. Um, we initiated our phase one, two clinical trial, uh, which is an anti-HIV duo CAR T trial um, for the treatment of HIV. These are cells that are living medicines um, that are infused into um, um, participants on the trial. And we're looking to establish for safety and then at the right dose to um, establish um, efficacy. Um, we're at the early stages. We've now um, dosed uh, two participants. We're very um, excited with the initial um, data that we're um, seeing. Um, but also we've been working on all of our other programs, including um, um, uh, gene-modified cells for the treatment of sickle cell disease and also um, various cancers. Also, we're a highly collaborative organization, and we've been initiating several important collaborations to advance our various programs. What was it particularly about CAR-T that led you to choose HIV for a trial to expand that technology? Yes, yeah, so CAR-Ts have been very effective um, and um, in the treatment of um, white blood cell cancers like leukemias, lymphomas, and multiple myelomas. And, um, um, and HIV, uh, as a virus, infects white blood cells, right? Um, and, and there's a unique um, aspect that when HIV um, infects those cells and then tries to multiply itself, it expresses its own proteins on the surface of the white blood cells. And that makes that a very unique target uh, for a CAR T cell to see and then kill specifically that cell off. Um, and so our goal here with anti-HIV um, dual CAR T cell therapy is to eliminate HIV infected cells long term in the body, right? And um, where the CAR T cells um, survive long term and then uh, kill off these cells. So you decrease the overall viral load or the virus's ability to replicate um, in the body long term. Mm -hmm. And what we do know is about HIV is the higher the viral load, um, the, the sooner you progress, the lower the viral load. Um, and if you can keep it very low um, um, indefinitely, um, there is no progression to disease. It's all based on viral load. Are there several locations where these trials will be taking place? Well, right now, this is a phase one, two clinical trial, so it is limited. Um, it's being done both at the University of California at San Francisco and the University of California at Davis. Mm -hmm. um, the principal investigator is Dr. Steve Deeks. He's a professor at UCSF. And our two um, um, co-PIs at UC Davis in Sacramento is Dr. Murdad Abedi and Dr. Paolo Triola Cancio. 
Um, and um, the first two participants have been dosed at the University of California um, at Davis. And uh, so far, we're um, seeing, um, um, you know, um, no safety issues whatsoever. Uh, we're very happy at this very first low dose, um, what we're seeing. So if this success uh, continues, would this be considered an actual cure for HIV? We hear a lot about being undetectable. There is no actual cure. But if, as you say, this vi- these uh, cells can be eliminated, thereby lowering the viral load more and more and more, would this be considered a cure for HIV? Well, our goal is to really reduce the viral load um, um, to a very low level indefinitely. So uh, for practical purposes, the disease does not progress. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes when people think about cure, they think about um, getting rid of the virus completely. And the virus is, is in the body um, in, in, and is hidden in many different compartments. It may be very difficult to completely eradicate the virus from the body. But if you um, reduce the viral load, and, um, and the virus cannot have the ability to replicate long term, um, you have done your job in terms of um, being able to, um, you know, um, uh, halt the advancement of the disease without the need of antiretroviral drugs because, you know, these CAR T cells are living medicines and they can persist in the body long term. Is there any way that you can provide a, a timeline for these studies? I know you say you're in the early stages, but what are we looking uh, at as that, that milestone? Where, where are we looking to go? Yeah, I think over the next year or so, we will want to um, be able to dose patients at uh, levels that we do believe should have efficacy or, or, or an effect. Um, this is, remember, well, this is the, the a vector that... Um, We've put into the clinic. We want to understand um, its ability to control virus replication, um, and um, and 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 at increasing doses to be able to see the overall effect. Um, so we're very excited uh, where we are at this stage, and over the next year, I think we'll we'll be able to learn a lot. And we don't necessarily have to stop with this vector. Um, you know, our strategy is just to understand the effect of this. Um, vector um, and understand the, the deficiencies needed. But right now, we are at the first stage of this vector, and we want to understand its um, safety and efficacy profile at this early stage. Is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners, and then give us a website where we can learn more? Your listeners can go to um, caringcross.org. Um, you can see our various programs that we are developing. Like, uh, you, like you mentioned, we're a nonprofit. Um, um, so, but we're highly collaborative, and our goal is to make these kind of medicines affordable and accessible all around the world um, by reducing their cost and um, focusing on uh, decentralized manufacturing where these products are made locally, close to hospitals, um, in an affordable and accessible way. But you can learn a lot more on our website at caringcross.org. Burrow, always a pleasure speaking with you. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Neil. I really appreciate it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Burrow Dropulich. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.